Welcome back to The Vocalist. Today, we are listening to the song Freak on a Leash by the band Korn. This is another first for me, so we are just going to get straight to it. Here we go. Takes a part of me Something lost and never seen Every time I start to believe Something's raped and taken from me From me Life's gotta always be messing with me Can't it chill and let me be free Can't I take away halfway through already I got a little I got a little sucked in um let me go all the way back if, did I read correctly I I thought I saw something about them winning the Grammy for the best music video this for this particular song you'll have to let me know for sure if that's correct um the the video the animation the concept is very captivating <laughs> um so I'm gonna I might have to close my eyes just so I listen really closely to the vocals. One thing that is, well, two things that are striking me off the bat. When I looked up corn, you know, I think it was Wikipedia said new metal or something like that. Um, this has a bit of a, hmm, I, I can definitely feel the 90s grunge influence. Um, there are some elements of very hard rock. There's also, I don't know if I'm getting a little bit of reggae in there. Maybe it was just, I don't know, a lot of, a lot of influences. Um, so again, and I say this every time, every metal band is just so unique and has something so new and so different um, from what I've heard previously, and this is no exception. So here we go. Oh, I won't I won't stop when we get to this part, but something that I liked um, with the animation is you have this sort of you think the animation is separate from the music and, you know, two separate entities rather. And then with the, the coffee drop, you or the drip words um you hear that in the music so I like how they started to sort of tie them together I think there might have been another moment where I thought oh they're connected um even though yeah it didn't seem like it at first takes a part of me 
Something lost and never seen Every time I start to believe Something's raped and taken from me From me I really... It's such an interesting sound. It has a slight sort of punk quality to it, but a lot of what I'm, I'm getting that s sort of fry at the beginning of all these and you can hear a lowered soft palette. It kind of feels wider and less tall in the oral cavity space. And it, it doesn't sound, lazy is not the right word. So I'm trying to think of a different one. Just, I don't know, relaxed maybe, uh, you know, it's got this spread and this fry and it just, I don't know, it's a whole mood. I'll keep going. Life's gotta always be oh, messing. actually, no, sorry. Let me back it up a little. I like um, his use of breath as well in this song. Like, how ingenious is... More often than not, we're trying to conceal our breath and hide it, uh, but I like that he's using it and the sound he's creating to increase the intensity in this moment. It's a part of me. Something lost and never seen. Every time I start to believe, something's raped and taken from me. From me, life's gotta always be messing with me. Can't it chill and let me be free? Can't I take away all this pain? I try to every night, all in vain, in vain. Sometimes I cannot take this place. Sometimes Here, I think I was anticipating or expecting him to put his voice in a very different place. So the surprise of this sound was very exciting. Um, rather than create more space, whether in the pharynx or in the oral cavity space, I feel like he is keeping and maintaining the space he already had set up, but he is pushing a lot more air forward. So it has this pressed quality. Um, and I also like the phrasing here. We're not getting as much separation. Let me back it up. Here we go. Can't it chill and let me be free? Can't I take away all this pain? I try to every night all in vain, in vain. Sometimes I can't. I really like that face, grace, the way he is keeping that nice spread and just kind of mm, hammering it in. It's it's very potent when it comes to delivering the lyrics and us being able to hear the text. Uh, I'll get this transition. Here we go. Sometimes I cannot feel my face. You'll never see me fall from grace. Love that. I want to back this up again. Um, in terms of vocals, we, we're getting that sort of fuller, um, warmer sound that I had originally been anticipating. So it's nice, again, to get all these different levels and layers when we're going through this piece. But the, uh, the drums in this section, I like the... It's not that they're tinny, there's just this sort of hollow quality, almost sounds like clapping or, you know, when someone's playing spoons, maybe. I, I don't know, it's just got a very unique sound, um, despite the fact that everything else seems so much fuller. There's this, um, I don't know, the drums don't, like they're still just as prominent, but it's a very different sound. I hope I hope I'm explaining that. I I don't know drums, so I don't I wouldn't be able to say 
what is happening right now. It just has like this more clicking quality to it um, and less of that sort of full like bass with snare, etc. Hopefully that makes sense. Here we go. like that that tiny moment when he incorporated a little bit more breathiness like I said in this section it sounded like he was pressing more air so we're getting that slightly more press on the chords and it just sounds like there's firmer reduction but then there's that moment of relaxation where it gets a little a little lighter maybe warmer a little breathier and it's just such a cool contrast in this particular moment and I also appreciated previous to this when he went into that really breathy place because again with the contrast it instantly like he just locked and loaded in the next um in the next section so we got such variety The beat of that section was so good. The timing, um, he was making so many sounds. It's, it was, it's like, um, okay, I don't even know how to describe it. Like some beatboxing meets gremlins. I don't know. It was, there was this very animalistic creature-like sound. Uh, let me, <laughs> let me go back. Um. Of course, it says most replayed. Okay, here we go. We, actually, I want to get the very beginning of that. I also, I see, ah, this video is so good. I like how they're doing that um, with the bullet going through and just them interacting with it. Let me play that again. It's very, it's an interesting sound, um, aside from everything else I said, you can hear this sort of, um, the press, but then he, it's like a guttural, mm, I can't even do it, like, uh, I don't even know. I'm I'm gonna sound like Cookie Monster. I think if I try, <laughs> but then um, he goes into this slightly more head resonant place, and so let me let me play that again. Mm -hmm. 
There, on that, that higher note. It's like, it feels so far forward, maybe a little nasally, more like a hum. I love this. And then the tonality here when the when the instruments come in, it's so eerie and funky. It's just so unique. Then it just was like so full when he said go. Um, it doesn't sound harsh. That's the thing that's so cool to me about what he's doing is with, within the fry, within the texture that he's adding, um, it doesn't sound incredibly harsh. It just sounds very full and very supported. Let me get that transition again that so we're still getting that press that forward placement but it feels just a little bit fuller um and i feel like that could be because this previous section it was just so much space and so a little bit of that carried over and so he's not getting that huge wide sort of um i don't even know how to describe it yeah it's just that wider sound um that pressed sound we're not getting as much of that it's just got a little bit more space. The way he said part of May at the end, that May was so smooth. And I think part of that could be because we've got the M at the beginning, which is a voice consonant, so the chords are already vibrating. And then his tongue was super high, May. So it just, it was just so velvety, but still had a lot of space, which I liked. And then again with the video um, coming full circle at the end, I love that. I There were so many moments throughout that clip that I, I, I assumed we were getting all the way back to the beginning, but at the same time, you just never know when there's a bullet flying through the air, like what's going to happen with it. So there was just this added layer of suspense watching the, you know, the official video um, along with the music. I'm curious to know if this particular song is a good representation of the band as a whole, or if everything they do is just so unique and so different so it's kind of hard to pin down um yeah i i think more than anything i just really liked <sighs> it was such a unique piece i think that's what i liked most um obviously i love moments where it's just insanity and intensity and i love beautiful ballads that make you feel things but this was just such um, the tonality, like I mentioned, the timing, it was all a little bit unexpected. And now I can understand why <laughs> I was getting, um, a lot of comments after seeing System of a Down or watching them, listening to them. Uh, I can understand why Korn was recommended because they just seem so unique and so different from a, 
a lot of what I've heard. So I don't know. <laughs> That's it for today. Thank you guys so much for this recommendation and hopefully I will see you next time.